So welcome to our next uh, Blueburst session uh, brought to you by Cloud Act UK. This one's in regards to value management using Geo Sessions. Uh, my name is Phil Corbett. I'll be your host today. I hope everyone can hear me nice and clearly. I think, Jade, you could hear me before, just double checking. Raise, it, raise your hand if anyone can hear me. Fantastic. All righty, so let's jump into the session. So a little bit about the agenda first. We're gonna go through a quick preview of uh, what is Blue Band Review. Uh, what was being covered in this particular series this is a four part series. Uh, this is number three in that part. And this one's titled Value, Value Management Workshop. So this is utilized studio sessions. Uh, for those who haven't seen studio sessions, it's a great opportunity to uh, give a little bit of exposure to it and how it can work for your business. And I go through the process of how to create a session, how to invite people to a session. Also, oops, sorry, it's my screen, how to, um, uh, also create your own uh, login details as well. So I'm going to show you that process using a out-of-the-box uh, email address. I'm going to go through some basic features with Studio Sessions, a little bit about notifications through that Studio Session, and then how to close the BIOS and also how to produce some reports uh, using Sessions as well. So any questions, feel free to ask throughout the actual webinar. I will write those at the very end of the webinar, guys, and answer what I can. So any questions, don't hold back. A little bit about Cloud A2K. So it's software and hardware solutions. Uh, we do a range of different things through consulting, training, development, and managed services. Uh, a lot of the guys involved with uh, Cloud A2K are from uh, industry themselves, whether it be been in the architecture, engineering, construction, infrastructure, or manufacturing space, uh, all here to provide our knowledge to help you guys grow. So Bluebeam itself was founded in about 2002. Uh, it has quite a lot of users globally. Uh, and a probably key one there is it's about 99% using the top tier uh, US contractors and it's growing over here as well. So it's getting a lot of traction in our space. Uh, a little bit about myself, prior to taking the role at A2K, I was formerly a structural draftsman uh, for a number of years before I uh, jumped across to A2K and had actively used Bluebeam since about 2014. So I do have my Bluebeam trainer certification uh, as well. So I've got a lot of training in the house for A2K. The series themselves, sorry about the spelling mistake, I just saw that. There is four different uh, series that we're doing for the YouTube channel. Uh, this is number three in that series, the value management and cost reduction. Uh, the two prior ones that have been completed is the changes to drawings that are not clouded and the tracking site issues. Feel free to jump onto our Cloud A2K YouTube channel uh, to see some more information about the uh, previous two. This one, number three, will be up there very shortly. And number four is around the corner, which is the data pool information on site. So now, now apart from just our webinar series, we are actually doing some microbrewery events uh, throughout most of the capitals. So Brisbane and Sydney, unfortunately, have been completed. That was done this week. If any of you guys are from Melbourne, uh, it is on November the 28th. It's a great way to actually be more of a hands-on environment and live with the actual presenter. So Chanel could be down there presenting Bluebeam for about an hour, just going through some points about the, uh, the construction methodologies. So, great event to attend, guys. A little bit about Bluebeam. So it's here to help us out uh, from an efficiency and collaboration point of view, utilizing PDFs, obviously. Some benefits in doing so, obviously increase revenue, reduce costs, and minimizing the risks, based on, you know, we can take it from what would be a normal uh, work paper workflow all the way through to a digital workflow instead. So there's some benefits straight away by jumping into that space. Now the power of the PDF, so what Bluebeam can offer through this PDF environment, uh, first thing off the rank is metadata. So apart from just throwing on some markups to represent how changes need to occur, there's a lot of data that's actually attached to that markup in order to understand who was actually created, what data was created, if you want to have custom information about it, and, you know, who may need to complete it, at what date, uh, different visual representations through colours and through text and different variety of shapes. Just make your life a little bit easier with actually reviewing processes rather than the old school red pen. So, metadata is a, a big part of that PDF. Hyperlinks is also a part of Bluebeam as well. So, we can actually start interacting with other PDFs through the simple linking of them together, all the way through to actually adding in hyperlinks that may open up a, a different design program. Okay, just to get a little bit more out of just a, a single PDF or not page. Bookmarks, great for things like specifications, your forms, uh, and any reports. Uh, it will actually generally uh, print out using bookmarks if it wasn't even uh, as a part of the original 
uh, documentation, whether that's through Word, Excel, etc. Okay, so bookmarks are very handy at navigating. Attachment of files and images in there. So we can start bringing a lot of other information uh, that is external to a PDF and start embedding them onto the PDF, such as images has been a great one for, let's say, our RFI processes. And actually sort of seeing that tied in there. So they're absolutely great. Now, file attachments aren't just limited to PDFs as well. You could attach Excel documents, Word documents, or even design files if you really wanted to. Spaces, uh, it's a great way to actually start splitting up PDFs into small little zones. So I can have a space that maybe in the top left-hand corner to do with a particular room, and I can add in markups into that space, and I can use as a filtering tool to understand, okay, if it's space number A or room number A, what are my actual issues? So it's uh, quite a neat little feature to help break up the individual markups. And then lucky last is the 3D data. So a lot of our design programs, such as Revit, AutoCAD, and Navisworks, just to name a few, can actually export out to a 3D PDF. As it exports, it actually brings out a lot of the metadata that's already in the design program and puts it into a 3D PDF space instead. So you can still get a lot of the information. You can still basically highlight the individual elements, see its element ID. And if you really wanted to, you can actually add some custom information into it and also actually you know, highlight if there's an issue with that particular element or communicate back and forth between the design programs. So it's quite cool. Apart from all those, there's different workflows we can utilize all these tools for as well. So some of these ones include, say, for instance, quantity takeoffs. So that's using all our measurement tools, counting tools, area tools, volume tools, you name it, to do some basic quantities. I can eat tight sell into that as well. So if you'd like some more information about that, there is a, uh, a YouTube video up there about using quantity takeoffs. It should be on the Cloud A2K uh, YouTube channel. Feel free to have a look at that one. We've got a collaborative review as well. So that's been using things such as uh, comparing documents and overlaying documents. So a really neat trick is using overlay documents to see all the different uh, disciplines on top of each other on the one PDF to see sort of how it integrates, especially if we don't have the 3D um, design uh, design uh, models, I guess we could say. So there is a way we can do that on a 2D PDF world. We've got drawing management systems. Uh, such as utilization of sets and thumbnails, so quickly see in an environment without having to dig through Windows Explorer, which is the latest drawing that is to do with that particular set of documents. So, some really, really cool tools, uh, sets being one of them. And I think there is actually a YouTube video about that as well. We do have the document management, which is actually utilizing a Studio Project. Uh, our focus today is obviously Studio Sessions, so that's the other half of the Studio environment. Um, if you'd like any more information about Studio Project, it is, it is a great way of hosting up different file types, so you're not restricted to just PDFs. In a more of a logical manner, you can actually invite people and restrict people based on their access. So it's a really, really cool way of actually uh, sharing information. And then field issues. So for example, what we're going through with the Studio sessions could be used as a field issue uh, situation or workflow. We're actually live and we're interacting with multiple people at the same time and actually jotting down our notes in order to understand what is actually happening with each project. So a lot of different ways of utilizing this tool. Now we'll jump into review itself. So as I did say, any questions, feel free to ask us and uh, I'll get to those at the end of the session. So I'm gonna close down my PDF here. Now I'm gonna show you very quickly how to start from scratch using Studio Sessions. So left-hand side here in your panels, you might be able to find that Studio button. Uh, if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to, to uh, sort of do this webinar with me if you'd like, because I was actually going to see if it was a little bit more interactive with everyone that's actually attending. So I'll actually show you how you can actually create your own login details if you really don't have any. First things first though, we've got two servers to choose from. We've got the States, or we actually have the UK. So be a bit careful with one you choose, because obviously I think the UK is going to be a little bit further away from us on the East Coast. Underneath management services, servers, just uh, for those that might have an enterprise agreement, you actually can add your own server and have it as a setup as like a cloud-based environment. So any information about that, feel free to reach out. It does require you to have an enterprise agreement on to do this, okay? So just a heads up. Now, if I go to sign in, it's gonna ask me for some credentials. Now, I do have a pre-existing um, studio environment for my A2K email address. I'm gonna show you how to create one using another. So I'm just going to put my name in here. I might say my display name is A2K, Phil Corbett. And it's a good thing I made a copy of it. Copy your email address in. 
and give yourself a password. So just one thing with the password too, it does require you to have a, that little special character. So as you are doing it, just make sure you do include, say for instance, a exclamation mark, Nat, or a, or a dollar sign or a hash, okay? Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to create a password. So it's as easy as that. Create the account, accept, and then it will prompt you to go to your email. So if I go open that one up, there we are. Very quickly, it's asked me to confirm my Bluebeam ID. I will. There we go. Simple as that. Close that down now. And using my sign in, I can very quickly put in my password. And there is an option here to keep you signed in as well. I'm just going to temporarily log into my new one I've just created. Now, a matter of what, 30 seconds, 40 odd seconds, we have now a new studio login details. So, now if you do have multiple, by all means, as long as you have a license of Bluebeam, you can have as many studio accounts as you wish. Um, it's not restricted to one. My toggle is here, so I'm currently signed in as PM Talbot. I can sign back out. Now I am going to sign back out, guys, because I actually have a few projects I need my actual car account. I'm going to utilize for this demonstration, okay? So just gonna switch out the email. And put in my password. This one will keep me signed in. And it will very quickly put me into my studio account. So as you can see, I actually have currently already a few little studio sessions going on. It's um, left hand side at the top there is Geo Projects. So that's a different environment. That's a document management environment. Geo Sessions is the one that looks like a little bit of a, uh, an old school classroom whiteboard. So that's tucked in there. Uh, if you'd like to create your own session, it is very, very easy. So it's a little plus new session. Give it a respective name. Let's call this A2K Blue Burst session. And if you have a current PDF open, you can actually drop that in straight away. Okay, so all you can pick up its file path, which is very handy. Now, as a part of creating a session, there's a few additional information down the bottom that can help you guys. So we've got things about what the actual attendees can and can't do. So if you want to restrict your attendees to only be working on documents you upload, keep the ad documents unticked. If you want anyone to be able to access this new studio session, which I'll invite you guys along to, to jump into here, you simply untick that actually restrict attendees. And then just to help us out with making sure that this is actually complete by today, I'll just throw an expiry date. So by doing that, it means it'll actually close down the session on your, or sorry, on my behalf for you guys. So it'll actually remove itself from your studio sessions environment. So a very quick way if you want to make sure you're trying to receive all that information by the end of the day. I go okay. I be a little bit patient, it does have to bounce back from the US server to come back. So it can take, 20, 30 seconds to do so. Now whilst it's doing so, oh, here we go, fantastic. It's created itself as a new little session in there. Now the very important part for you guys, if you'd like to join me today, is this little nine number, okay? Now this here automatically pops up. So this gives me an opportunity here to actually add in uh, particular people based on email addresses. You're more than welcome to add them in one by one, which can be pretty painful, or if you use groups. So I actually have a group of people I've created here that has a, a different set, there we go, that has different email addresses attached to it, that when I hit okay, it will generate an email out straight out for them. Now, if you don't have any groups, and you do just wanna do this as a bulk email through, say, Windows, oh, sorry, Outlook, you can simply copy the invitation, jump into your Outlook, and paste it. And there you have a studio session, okay? So that is your other opportunity and then you can submit to your attendees. So I'm just gonna minimize that. Okay, so that's all tucked in there. Uh, you can have a message at the same time. I oh, join my group, oh, sorry, my session. And okay. And also now an invitation to those individuals. Now anyone here on the webinar that would like to jump in and have a, have a go at the studio session as we go through it, you're more than welcome. That nine number is what you're after. And I'll just guide you how to join. So if you're in your studio session environment, you're more than welcome to hit the plus and then join. And all you need is that nine number digit right there. 315-785-272.
Now I'll just jump back into the session myself. There we go. So looks like Jade has actually joined us. So uh, our sales from A2K. So she's added herself to it. You can see my her email address tucked up against it as well. And if I hover over mine, I can see my email address as well, guys. So perfect. Now, as you are going through and work away in sessions, this little neat feature here about statusing uh, can be quite handy if you are a little bit conscious if you, know, you want to make sure that certain people aren't starting, you know, completing some of the works before you're actually finished. So what you could be doing is going, up, hey guys, I'm actually currently reviewing this PDF and it will actually put you in a reviewing state. Okay, so in my active PDF, I'll just close that one down. So this is the one that's actually on this geo sessions. Uh, it's saying that I'm in the reviewing process. So it's a great way of communicating, hey, maybe just hold off actually doing anything to this PDF until I'm actually done. So status is a great way of, uh, sort of showing that. Uh, if you do need to add more people into it, okay, we have in our attending access in here. So I can add in more people uh, simply by copying the invitation or going through and using that adding feature once again. Okay, and also depending on the person too, I can actually deny individuals if it's actually only got, you know, too many, too many uh, emails for on. So there is a bit of control about the actual attendees and you see their email addresses. Below that is then the document. Okay, so I only have the one PDF in here, but if I wish to add in more, it's simply an addition of more files. Now a neat trick too is you can actually have SharePoint projects set up and actually have them hosted to your Bluebeam. There is some settings you do need to do in the background. So if you'd like further information about that, feel free to ask out. That way you can actually work live off the SharePoint, complete these sessions and then push it back up. So there's no double handling of PDFs. Or if you want to maintain from your local drive or a server, you can go straight from your desk. And then you can add your PDF. Now, as we're going through and adding in PDFs, obviously we then start our marking up process. So Everyone remember the tools chest on the left hand side? Great way, making sure you're using common markups. I say detail required, may not have been provided. Where is it? Now, as I add these markups to the session, anything I add, I can delete, update, change, I can make comments to it, and I can even go through and set statuses. Okay, so I can go completed. And as it's going through, it's drilling down that I've actually made some changes. Okay. In addition to that, if I find a markup that I didn't do, you see it sort of changed it from having a yellow dots around the outside to sort of grey. That's indicating to me that actually someone else had actually created that markup for me. And as we can see, there certainly has been. Okay, if I try hit delete, I can't delete it. All right, so then make sure that any of your markups can't be touched. All right, it's so only you can delete, remove, and add. So there's a little bit of protection there. Now, as individuals are going through, and I just noticed Jade actually did that for us, which is great, you can actually notify people, okay, to say, hey, there's actually a little bit more concerning information over here. Do you mind providing the information? Okay. If I double click onto that, it actually takes me directly to that markup that she was notifying me about. So if I would like to notify her about a certain piece of information, I can right click onto it and go alert attendees. Depending on who's actually in the project, grab the individual and that notification will be sent to her on her computer. Okay, so it's a neat little way of just trying to communicate back and forth. Now at the same time as we've got these notifications as record about everything that's actually happening, you can actually live chat. So go, okay, hey Jay, do you mind updating the drawing set? So there's still that communication, just general chat flow that you can do within the record area as well, okay? As you are going through and doing all this, you can actually produce little summary reports, maybe at the end of the week or at the end of the session, okay? Now, this sort of brings up a different topic about the session too, is these sessions can be something that you hold for maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or even the life of the actual project, okay? Also with these sessions too, I do apologise, I should have mentioned this earlier. If I copy that invitation and send it to someone that does not have Bluebeam review, they can actually open up through a Windows Explorer and simply follow you instead. Okay, so they can't mark up, unfortunately, 
the other C and interact with the PDF and actually understand what you're trying to communicate rather than just simply over the phone. So it's another great way of just using uh, utilizing it as sort of a, a meeting tool. So that one's tucked in there. And also, if you're not interested in seeing any of the chats or you don't want to see any of the things about the attendees uh, jumping in and jumping out and you're just interested in the markups, you can filter all sort of parts of this record. Okay. Now, one thing that usually does happen, let's, let's be honest here, is Wi-Fi can drop out every now and then. You might have it hot to your phone, but you've accidentally walked into a basement as you're live on the, uh, on the site and you know, the, uh, the Wi-Fi drops out. You can work offline, okay? So you can essentially have your studio session actively, uh, sorry, live initially. Okay, when you've walked out to site, your phone drops off by accident, it will just put it in working offline mode instead. Okay, it doesn't restrict you from marking up. So I can still go through, add some comments here. Say for instance, maybe these door layouts. Uh, maybe we swap. Okay, and as I add that mark up in there, it will show me a little red symbol. A little symbol there indicates that, hey, you've added that mark up in there, but it's just currently gonna sit within the pending, okay, until we're back into Wi-Fi access. So whether it's back in the office or your hotspot, you're fine. I simply switch that back to connecting. So I'm back online. And it will move it from a pending to the actual record. Okay, and there we go. It's actually going through, whoops, sorry, at the very bottom there. And it's added my comment now. Anyone live can actually see all this. So you don't have to worry about accidentally dropping out of Wi-Fi or anything like that, which is great. So now, obviously, this has all been tracked down the very, very bottom here. So if anyone's dabbled with uh, statuses in the past, okay, it's really cool. You can actually go through on any of these markups. You may actually want to add some comments to. You can reply or set a, set a status to it. I might reject that one, okay? That gives me a little bit more functionality when I go through and filter by things that are actually need to be completed, uh, rejected or accepted, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's another filtering capability. All right, so as I mentioned, this session may stay open uh, for the entire length of the project, or it could actually be closed off after a meeting. Now, there is options in here. You don't have to always be in the session, okay? You can simply leave the session at any time, and I'll just close it down. Now, as you close it down, you'll see all your sessions on the left-hand side. Now, a neat thing, see how it goes red up there? It means it's actually got an expiry date. Okay, once it's gone, it is gone, unless the actual owner of that session reopens up. That, if you're just an attendee, simply you can't open that session once again. See the little number on this one here? That little number represents notifications. So if I jump into just another session temporarily, I'll add some documents in there. Any notifications that are directed at you, so here, channel here is alerted me about a particular markup, okay? That will come up as a little number when you actually have left the session, okay? And actually it gives you a quick little you know, rundown of going, hey, you've got still two notifications outstanding. Do you mind going through and actually reviewing? So very neat way of just communicating. And if I jump back into my previous session like I have, uh, if you want a quick way of uh, essentially getting someone to follow your screen, at any time, guys, you can actually suggest to people to follow me, okay? Or I can follow them, all right? So depending on what they're doing on their screen, they can right click and follow. So I'll see what Jade's up to. He might be zooming in and out. <laughs> I can follow and also at any time just by simply hitting escape. Oop. Oop. And zooming in and out, there we go. It'll unfollow her movements. So very, very helpful way of communicating uh, if, uh, if, you, if there's no grids that you can reference or there might be quite a few different objects on the PDF. It's another way to say, guys, hey, I'm actually working in this space. So that's quite neat. And then ultimately when you go through and finish the session. So to finish, uh, it's going to show me who it's going to email it to. So it's going to email both Jade and myself about the changes and markups that were done on this particular PDF. It's going to save into a particular location. I'm going to put that straight to my desktop. Uh, whoop, that one there. 
Okay, and also I'm going to get it to generate a report. Is that too? I'm going to throw onto my desktop just so I can open it up for you guys. All righty. And in the settings here, we've got a few different options. So I can just do a record summary, okay, which is just going to give you that hit list on the left. Or I can combine it with the actual PDF that was in that session. So if you want it to be hyperlinked and you'll be able to see what people are doing through the PDF, I could combine a files report instead. You have an option here in regards to the size of the page it's going to print this out on to and the uh, orientation. Not really a big deal there. Now, if you want to add certain notes in there, maybe it's today's date, uh, 19, 11, 21, that could be something you can add in there, uh, give a different title and actually include and uh, not include certain things about the actual session. So I'm going to give you absolutely everything as an example here so we can see it. I'm going to get to close the file after it's finished. All right, so we'll close that session down. It will essentially kick everyone out. It is now completed and it'll produce the report. If I go OK here, here's my report. It is a multi-page PDF. So it's showing me a bit of a hit list of what has happened, time date stamped, and applied to which document. I can go to any one of these markups. So for instance, this one here, and it takes me directly to it. So it is all hyperlinked through that particular PDF. So that there, guys, is a uh, very quick rundown of using Studio Sessions. Uh, as I said, you can use this for a 10-minute meeting all the way through to the lifetime life cycle of a project. And uh, add and remove documents as you see fit. Uh, there's a lot of settings in there um, when it comes to who can access it, where you restrict it. Uh, you can group different email addresses together as well. So you have a bit more control of who is associated to the project. So a very neat feature. And the best part about it, it's free. So with a studio, oh sorry, with a blue band license, you get access to studio, studio project and studio sessions. Uh, studio project is a little bit different. It's unlimited file types, unlimited file sizes, and also as many people as you want. Sessions, on the other hand, you're restricted to 500 people who can attend a session. And I think it's about a thousand documents at uh, one gigabyte each maximum. So you know, really we're dealing with figures that we probably want to it uh, with the studio sessions. So, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions of what they've uh, seen today? There is a little Q and A um, button there, guys. That you're more than welcome to to ask if you have anything. All right, no questions. That's all good. Uh, I do appreciate your time today. Hopefully uh, a few things um, you can take away from today's little presentation about studio sessions. Uh, if you do come up with any questions after today's webinar, guys, feel free to still tune through to the respective PDMs uh, and um, they'll get in contact with uh, one of our Blue Band specialists at H2K and more than happy to answer any other questions, guys. So, awesome. Thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next Bluebeam webinar.